How do you calculate the capacity of an overhead tank? Do they teach you to paint walls in architecture college? What are doors? Where are the toilets? And to begin this episode of Question and Answers with Architects Workshop India, why do we use rangolis? Rangoli, rangoli, pukolam, kolam, mughal, alpana. All these are art forms of creating patterns on the floor at the entrances of our houses. Each of these is slightly different from each other based on the materials used, the tools and techniques used for its application. While rangolis are seen as signs of auspiciousness, also as decorative elements, rangolis mark territory. They imply this belongs to me. They are expressions of ownership. They show signs of being lived in. They also show that the neighborhood is not just maintained, it is also decorated. Rangolis are also a matter of habit. They are tradition. They are passed on from one generation to another. And it becomes a part of the daily routine to be putting a rangoli outside one's house. How do you calculate the capacity of an overhead tank? To figure out the size of an overhead tank, we need to calculate the amount of water that we think that we might need for an entire day. And the way we do that is by estimating uh, a certain number of litres per day. A good rule of thumb is 135 litres per day. Assuming we take 135 litres per day per person, and we assume a four-person household, that comes up to about, doing quick maths, 275, 40-ish. So that's about 540 liters of water per day per uh, house of, say, four people, uh, which basically means that uh, if you want to have storage for just one day, a 500 and a little bit more of water per day is sufficient but we generally want to store at least two days worth of water just in case there's no water for a day if there's no supply at least you have that much water stored for yourself which is how you end up with these kind of tanks behind me with these uh, thousand liter it's approximately one and uh, 90 percent of a second day kind of storage do they teach you to paint walls in architecture college no, but they do teach us how to paint a wall though. Why paint is needed, what it actually is, chemically speaking. How many layers do you need on a particular wall? How do you decide? What are the different types of paint and so on? For instance, there is something called volatile organic compounds or VOCs in chemistry, generally which are bad for us. So we should probably avoid them in the paints that we use, especially for the internal spaces. But we can figure out how to paint a wall though. And we have. Where are the toilets? Toilets and other services are an essential part of design. They cannot be inserted as an afterthought. In many projects, the design process begins with the services. In many others, the services are highlighted. Hence, where are the toilets is asked by us teachers as early as possible in your design, especially when you have toilets placed one above the other. So you can come up with a holistic, well thought out design that caters to all aspects. What are doors? A door is an openable barrier that allows the passage of humans, animals, furniture in and out of an enclosure. A door also separates the inside from the outside. It provides safety from rain, wind, sun. It provides fire safety, that is, it keeps the fire in or out. 
It provides privacy. In short, when a door is closed, it acts like a wall. It also regulates the amount of light and ventilation that comes in, like windows. Most conventional doors are around 2.1 meters in height, 0.9 meters wide, and are rectangular. These dimensions correspond to human proportions. The standardized dimensions help in modularity. That is, manufacturing doors anywhere and assembling them in sight as they are of the same dimensions everywhere. You might enjoy one of these videos next. That one. That one. Or that one. Maybe. Subscribe. Tell me. Look at it. Choose. One. Can you go? Choose.